1662, Robert Boyle discovered a relationship that exists between the pressure and volume of gases. He discovered that at constant temperature, the pressure and volume of a gas are inversely proportional to each other. Let us imagine an enclosed container with a piston. This piston can be moved up and down depending on the amount of pressure being applied. If more pressure is applied, the piston moves downward. If less pressure is applied, the piston moves up. The volume is the amount of space where gas particles can move around. Pressure can be expressed in different units of measurement, such as atmospheres, or ATM for short, pascal, PA, or millimeters of mercury, mmHg, while volume can be expressed in terms of liters or cubic centimeters. Diagram A represents the initial condition of a gas under a certain pressure. Here we can see that the piston is on top of the container, wherein we can assume that the applied pressure is low. Because the applied pressure is low, there is a high amount of volume for gases to move around. On the other hand, letter B is the final condition. And as you can see, we apply more pressure to the piston. And as we apply more pressure downward to the piston, the space where gases can move around decreases. That is why volume is low. So as you can see, as we apply more pressure to the container, the space for gases to move around decreases. Hence, the relationship between the two are inversely proportional. As pressure increases, volume decreases. Or, as pressure decreases, volume increases. We can express that relationship in a formula that is used to solve problems in connection to the pressure and volume of gases. And the formula is P1V1 is equal to P2V2, wherein P1 and V1 are the initial pressure and volume of the gas, while P2 and V2 are the final conditions of the gas. Let us use this formula to solve some problems in connection to Boyle's law. What is the new volume in liters of a 1.6 liter sample of rayon gas initially at 50 millimeters of mercury after its pressure is changed to 200 millimeters of mercury at constant temperature. The first step in solving the problem is to write the given base from the question. So based from the question, our initial volume is 1.6 liters. The initial pressure is 50 millimeters of mercury. It was changed to 200 millimeters of mercury. That is why it is the V2 and we are asked to get the final volume. Using the formula P1V1 is equal to P2V2, let us substitute this given in order to find the V2. Which is 50 millimeters of mercury, P1, times 1.6 liters, V1, is equal to 200 millimeters of mercury, P2, multiplied by the V2, which is the one we are looking for. Then let us put this quantity to the other side of the equation so that V2 is the one left on this side of the equation. Since this quantity is in multiplication, when we transfer it to the other side of the equation, it becomes a division. So what we will have is 50 millimeters of mercury times 1.6 liters divided by 200 millimeters of mercury is equal to V2. And then we can cancel the units, millimeters of mercury, leaving behind the liters as the final unit 
for our final answer. Solving for the equation 50 times 1.6 divided by 200 will give us an answer of 0 0.4 liters as our final volume for our question. So let us see if our answer makes sense. According to Boyle's law, as pressure increases, volume should decrease because again, they are inversely proportional. From the question, we have seen that initially, the pressure is 50 millimeters of mercury and it was increased to 200 millimeters of mercury. Since pressure increased, we can expect that the volume should decrease. Our initial volume is 1.6 and our final volume is 0 0.4, which is lesser from the original volume. A sample of helium gas has a volume of 12 cubic centimeters at 600 atmospheres. What new volume is needed to change the volume to 36 cubic centimeter? The first step again is to identify the given base from the question which are the following. The initial volume is 12 cubic centimeters. The initial pressure is 600 atmospheres. The final volume is 36 cubic centimeters. And we are asked to get the final pressure. Using the formula, let us substitute the given in order to solve the question. Now, since we want to get the P2, let us transfer this quantity to the other side of the equation. Since this quantity is in multiplication, when we transfer it to the other side, it becomes division. Therefore, our equation becomes 600 atmospheres times 12 cubic centimeters divided by 36 cubic centimeters will give us the final pressure. And then we cancel the units of measurements that can be canceled cubic centimeters to cubic centimeters. Our final unit will become atmospheres. And then when we solve this equation, which is 600 times 12 divided by 36, we will get 200 atmospheres. Now let us again check if our answer makes sense. Based from the question, the initial volume is 12 cubic centimeters and it was increased to 36 cubic centimeters. According to Boyle's law, pressure and volume are inversely proportional. Since volume increased, volume, which is 600, should decrease. Our answer, 200, is less than 600 atmospheres.